Hi, it's Ross from SDS. Welcome back to the channel and video number 97. This will be another video featuring the RV10. I know you guys really like the RV10 videos. We'll be doing some uh, data logging on the SDS ECU and showing you what we learned there. And we'll have a camera outside the airplane for a change, uh, just to have a different perspective on things.
Okay, what we're looking at here is uh, a plot of the data logging from the SDS ECU. And uh, if you're not familiar with it here, I'll just show you a few things. So we've got uh, various lines here. The red one is RPM. Green is air fuel ratio. Manifold pressure in white. Ignition timing in light blue. And injector duty cycle in purple, that's here. So we've got RPM over here on the left side, and on the right side here we've got air fuel ratio. And uh, when I move the cursor here, I can uh, bring it up against any line here, and we can uh, see the values change here. So when I bring the cursor anywhere on the graph here, you can see the RPM, manifold pressure, air fuel ratio, uh, knock activity, ignition timing, throttle position, air temperature, and duty cycle. So you'll see uh, just below the uh, cursor here, I've just got it here on the injector duty cycle. We can see how that changes. And if I bring it up to, uh, say, the white line here, which is manifold pressure, you can see the lower left here are the manifold pressure changes down here. So by moving the cursor over any of these lines, we can uh, see exactly what the reading was on each of the parameters. So normally the injector duty cycle here will follow what the manifold pressure does at a given RPM. And uh, so when we uh, see a reduction here in manifold pressure, you'll also see the injector duty cycle step down. However, it should be uh, pretty smooth and you'll see this kind of follows here. What we uh, did get coming into the pattern here is we throttled back, got uh, quite a rough running condition momentarily. And when we looked at the day log later, we could see this uh, area right here. You can see how the uh, injector duty cycle was hammering up and down here very rapidly. And the uh, air fuel ratio here uh, spiked very lean at the same time. This is unusual. Normally you'd see the uh, injector duty cycle do this sort of thing and follow what the manifold pressure was doing. You can see how that's uh, working here. So we saw that here and also here. So when we, uh, zoom in and put the cursor on this area here, we see the manifold pressure down here. We're seeing uh, some uh, variations right at the 11.1 .1 to 10.69 area. So uh, later on we looked in the uh, values chart downloaded from the ECU and we saw that uh, there was a stray value in one of the ECUs that uh, didn't make sense. Here we have the values from the primary ECU and these are the manifold pressure fuel values here. And you'll see that the values increase in a fairly linear fashion here as uh, manifold pressure increases. However, right here at uh, 10.7 inches, we have a stray value. This should have been around uh, 49 or 50, just like these ones here. However, it drops by approximately 20 rather suddenly. And uh, so that made the, the engine very lean right there, which is exactly what we were seeing in the data logs. So as the manifold pressure fluctuated between, say, 11.1 uh, .1 and 10.7, as we saw, the fuel uh, air-fuel ratio was changing uh, massively, or something uh, close to 70% probably. Uh, and that's why the engine ran rough. So we uh, found that uh, by looking at the data logs. So let's change this value back to about 50 where it should be, and uh, problem solved. The engine's nice and smooth now when he throttles back. So we'll look at a more interesting area of the graph here. And this is uh, pulling out onto the runway and uh, commencing the takeoff. So we'll see the injector duty cycle is quite low here. And uh, as we increase the manifold pressure, which is the white line here, uh, we can see the injector duty cycle climbs, the RPM climbs, and the air-fuel ratio goes from uh, what's probably in invalid readings here up to uh, getting about uh, 13 to 1 air fuel ratio here and you'll see here the ignition timing goes to about 24 so as I move the cursor we can watch all these uh, parameters change down here so all things should make uh, logical sense here we open the throttle the manifold pressure goes up the injector duty cycle goes up the RPM goes up the ignition timing goes to what it should be at uh, wide open throttle which is uh, 24 degrees here so that's how things should look. If we see any weird anomalies, we want to take a look at those areas there. So you can see anywhere there's a bump in the injector duty cycle here, 
we also see that there's a bump in the RPM, which corresponds to more fuel. Uh, as RPM changes, uh, the ignition timing may change. That makes sense. And you'll see also a bump in the manifold pressure. So this all kind of makes sense here. Here's a screenshot from the Garmin from another flight at about the same altitude. And this is at 2100 RPM. And we're showing uh, 163 knots true. But uh, we've discovered with uh, static air in the airplanes actually plus 7 knots. So that's uh, 170 knots true. Not bad for 11.5 gallons per hour. And here we are back up at uh, 2400 RPM, same manifold pressure, and we're showing 171 knots true, plus 7 knots, that's uh, 178 on 12.5 gallons an hour. Again, uh, not too bad for a four-place airplane. That's it for this one. Sorry about the uh, audio problems. We'll hopefully have those licked next time. Uh, thanks very much for watching. See you next time.